This is Primo. Primo is the first Landmarks lion. I'm always being asked, what is the place in New York that I love the most? And people think, oh my goodness, what are all the buildings I, I go through in the neighborhoods? I, what am I going to come up with? The place in New York that I treasure, that's like asking which of your children do you love most? My favorite New York City landmark is Gracie Mansion. It's a wonderful late 18th century home. Uh, it is living history. I have always been astonished and delighted by Times Square. I think it's an absolutely extraordinary uh, achievement because it's so American, because it's for everybody. The uh, single place that I treasure most is my house, 157 Willow Street. Landmark buildings and landmark spaces offer us perspective, a sense of identity, they shape our experience, and most of all, provide us with an awareness that some things last longer than mortal existence. 8990, we were cut 42%. And the recession happened, and all those new programs went out of business. Boom, done. Mrs. Hart never considered doing that. It was always such an important part of our mission, a feather in our cap. It's architecture, for God's sake. The only thing that is constant in New York City is change. New York is, and always has been, in a state of perpetual transformation and I wouldn't have it any other way. But as our city changes, rising to meet each new challenge that we face, we have a responsibility to make sure that the history of our great city survives. small grassroots groups that are really focused individually and it, it it's bringing them all together as HDC does as a collective voice. That I walk up my stoop, I pause to consider if it really be a morning glory at my window satisfies me more than the metaphysics of books. When he publishes Leaves of Grass in 1855, when he lived in this house, American poetry sort of breaks free. We are in the Louis H. Latimer House Museum, which is in Flushing, Queens. It was home to African-American inventor and humanist Louis H. Latimer. The Shrine of Our Lady of Mount Carmel was begun in 1937, and it is still under construction. The mom-and-pop neighborhood storefronts that have prevailed in some cases for over a century are rapidly disappearing, like in the face of modernization and conformity. And we feel that New York streets are suffering in the process. And I had that person since 1963. You've been coming here since yes, 1963? Yes, yes, yes. The influence of this place in popularizing the blues, in popularizing jazz, in popularizing ragtime, the first ragtimes came out of here. All of the things that we think of as American music came from right here on this block. Unknowingly, people were going out of their way to go buy historic buildings rather than new buildings. And it, that realization, I think, was, was something that, that the Landmarks Commission itself didn't understand. I always believe very strongly that those of us who are practitioners and those of us who study the material science also should understand the why, uh, the social reasons, the cultural reasons, the historic reasons, why <clears throat> something works, doesn't work, why something's popular, why something comes into fashion, goes out of fashion. And terracotta is really a wonderful example of that. The preservation field is moving more and more towards recognizing sites of cultural significance and not just great works of architecture.
preservation probably needs to continue to think about how do we reinvent how we do preservation as advocates. How do we look at the present arrangement of organizations as they've evolved and we look to the needs of the future? We've been able to um, build these relationships with which really has been the key to our survival. We wouldn't been, have been able to last this long without making friends and developing that kind of um, relationship with um, the people in our communities. It is absolutely shocking what happens when you don't have people fighting. So you need people there fighting, and 50 years of people fighting is a good thing. I can't wait to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Historic Districts Council as we uh, fight for preservation for the past 50 years, the next 50 years, and hopefully eternity. <laughs>